God. Wow, it's another day. God has given us the grace to finish the week. The week is just coming to an end. And we thank him for the whole week. Uh, we are talking about uh, when God visits us, one of the proof is also is the desire to come into his presence. What we are calling the spirit of prayer comes upon you. You find yourself driven into his presence. When you find yourself going to pray, uh, you need to you need to to be organized. You need to plan yourself. When you now see that God is giving you the ability to to come in his presence. I want to read Hosea chapter 14 verse 2. Hosea. The Bible says, take with you words and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips. Wow. Yesterday we spoke about three things about prayer. Why you should pray. And why God cannot help unless you pray. Do we remember the three things? The first one is this is a class, eh? <laughs> three things. What are the three things? Number one. I see you need notebook and a pen. <laughs> uh, three things. Number one is uh, he created the earth for man to rule. That is why God himself did not make for himself a physical body. There are three different spirits. Four, in fact. God is a spirit. Satan is a spirit. Angels are spirit. And man is a spirit. Of the four, only one is given the physical body. When he created man in chapter number 1, verse 26, and he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion on the, over the, on, the face of, on, on the face of the earth and over this thing that flies. Just let them have. It's man who should have dominion on earth. That is the reason as to why uh, in chapter 2, he designed for a man a body to, that man will dwell in. The man that he created in chapter 1 is a spirit being. What he did in chapter 2, he took dust from the ground, the Bible says, and then he put the man in. So the man is not those, the thing that he, the dust he took from the ground. The man is the one that he created in chapter 1. And that man he created in chapter 1, which is, is a spirit. And the Bible says, in his image and likeness, he made him. Meaning God is a spirit, and man is a spirit. So the image and likeness is talking about the spirit nature of God. But then chapter 2, he is designing for him a body, where he put him in the body now. So, we are saying, of the three, of the four spirits we are talking about, in fact there are more than four, the seraphims, cherubims, those are the ones in heaven. Uh, or the four living creatures. If you read chapter number four, you find what I'm talking about of the book of Revelation. Those, those are spirits. Their world is as real as the physical world that you're in, the spiritual world. The devil is reigning in his hell. I don't know whether there is any comfort there. <laughs> There's no comfort. <laughs> and God is reigning in heaven. And man was designed to live on earth. 
So he created this earth for man to rule. He didn't create him for, for himself. So unless man allows him on earth, God will not come. And what gives you advantage on earth is your physical body. Now, as long as you are in this physical body, you have access to, to the physical body, to physical world. When the, your body malfunctions and it, it, it gets sick and it just expires, uh, then you leave this world. You don't have an influence on this earth. Even you, when you live now, you cannot do nothing. That's why sometimes when breadwinners die and people are crying, what are we going to do? Who will take care of them? Because they cannot have influence on earth. Or even visionaries, big visionaries, when they die without passing on vision, the vision just dies. They can do nothing. So the first reason as to why you need to pray is because unless you allow God to calm down, he will not. In fact, the right word is he cannot. He does not have the ability. He created, given us the body so that he will use our body. Like for example, in Marsabit, if God wants to work in Marsabit, uh, who is to help him? You. If you allow him, you say, use me. What do you want to do? I am ready. Then God will use you. Somebody in Nairobi will. Somebody around the world. So if you don't pray, that's why prayer is needed. You stand up and tell God in Marsabit, we need this. In my family, I need this. In the workplace, I need this. And now as you speak, then, so number two reason we said is because you have your will, your ability to think and do something. So, now the reason why we are taught the word of God is so that God sells his ideas to us as we sit down and we receive the information. He tells you that this is the way I think I should, you should go. This is. Now, as you receive his way of thinking, that's why teaching is important. Jesus introduced teaching immediately after he began. And teaching is simply selling the idea of God to you so that you receive his idea. You begin now living like what he says. Now, if you want just to do, to think the way you want, not the way God wants, now that is a challenge. That's a big challenge. If you want to live the way you want. God cannot say no. Because you are telling him, this is, and one thing that the devil did when he caused the fall of man, he changed the way a man thinks. The Bible says God gave him his image and likeness. Image and likeness simply talks about an app on a phone. A software on a motor, uh, not a motorbike, <laughs> on, a, on a laptop. <laughs> For example, you put, <laughs> may God deliver me from motorbike. I want to go into a, into a, a vehicle now. Until now, I'm talking about a motorbike. <laughs> we need to move out on this one. You go to the next level in Jesus' name. Uh, an app, when you put an app on your phone, for example, the app that plays music. That app can play any music, any music, whichever language. It doesn't say, I don't know Kiborana. That app, it can play Amharic. It can play English. In other words, the image and likeness that we're talking about, God put something in the system of a man. Adam didn't need somebody to teach him. God also didn't have to use his physical eyes and physical ears when he was to communicate to him. He directly deposited what he had in his spirit. Direct. When you speak to God direct and he speaks directly to you, he doesn't speak to your ears. In fact, your physical eyes and ears don't work. The spirit one is the one that works. When Adam sinned, that is, the, that is what died. So that people could not access God. And God became a stranger. Even today, uh, for somebody to say God has spoken to me, he, you must have worked with God for some time. You don't even understand. That is when the, the, 
the capacity of the human spirit was was paralyzed to, to get access to God. That's what happened. That's why Adam was chased from the Garden of Eden. So now, if God begins speaking to you directly, He will naturally download into your spirit. Even during the Bible times, how did people receive information? Abraham, in dreams and vision, God. The Bible says God speaks to him. God transfers information to him. And when God transfers information, to, he lives according to that information. In the New Testament, Paul, Paul is the guy who got the most revelation, even than the, the, the apostles, the 12 of them combined. The man just met Jesus on his way to Damascus. And then his eyes went black, blank. You know, it just, you know, in a blackout. This one was closed, but the inner one was opened. And he received information that even Peter does not understand. And he says some things that Paul writes, I don't understand. <laughs> it came direct to him. To him. There's so many things that Paul wrote that Peter don't understand. God deposited direct into his spirit. So that's how God wants to influence the way you think and then he will use you. But if you choose that, I'm going to use, um, I want to just do my own ways. God can do nothing. And you just continue living the way you live. That's why the church is very ineffective because the church does not think the way God thinks. God has thousands in the house who are as good as useless to him. Marsabit should be turned upside down. The reason why Marsabit is Christian. The reason why Christians are not powerful as you compare to these other ones who are within and they're doing more is because Christians, their mind are not being renewed daily. They come only once and even that one day, somebody is just preaching anything. The other ones, specifically, even when they address people, they are result-oriented. When they, work, they speak about something, then they go and do. That's what they do. But us, even what we are, is being shared on the pulpit is substandard. It's not something that can cause change. God cannot use you unless he has changed you. Now, if he has changed you the way you think through the word that you receive from him, then now, he, even when you stand and pray, you agree with him. This is what your word says. I'm speaking this in my life. This is what your word says about my, my land. This is, I agree. So you, you stand here and say, yes, it's true. We are doing it. Yes, somebody has to be healed. Yes. <laughs> now, if you don't have that understanding, you become a beggar. God, you know, I am sick. I have no, you, you're just, you know, God, I have no money. I cannot do your work. God, you know, it's the mindset that is needed. Thinking the way God thinks. You don't need the money. You just need the word of God. The word of God will create for you money. The word of God will create for you health. That's what Jesus says. I do not cry about what you eat or what you put on. He says, give yourself to his word. Seek the kingdom. When the word enters you, everything that you need will come to you. That is the way God thinks. If my mind has been structured to think the way God thinks, then God will bring himself anything I need. And all these things shall follow you. Shall follow you. So number three, we say it because of the power of the words. Your, world, your life is a creation of your word. Your business is a creation of your word. Your job is a creation of your word. Whatever you've been... It is not, it's not God who created what you're doing. The life you're living is not God who is creating. You are the one who is creating. If you are failing, you're speaking the words of failure that is causing you to fail. If you're succeeding, I'm not talking in prayer now. I'm not talking the, the, the ordinary, and the, or just ordinary life that we live. When you see a, a rich person, nobody was born rich. Every one of them began from somewhere. But they began saying from, from, shop, from kiosk to, 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 to a bigger shop. Then to wholesale. Or to man, to somebody's talking. Then I'm going to buy a vehicle. I'm going to. Somebody's just reasoning and he believes it's possible. Another one is even telling God, even getting food is hard. 
<laughs> Two people thinking. <laughs> That's why God has to affect the way you reason. <laughs> when you think, after you think, you do what? You speak. So someone is believing in this town I can succeed. Lakini kuna mtamali kwa na kiosk miaka 10 iliyopita na 20 akutuna hiyo kiosk because the way he think is the problem. Mwingine amekuja tu jana. That's why information is power. Information is power. So now after you the way you think is changed, now the way you talk changes. Now God will really depend on what you say in any circumstances of life. He has nothing to do if you speak what he does not approve. That's why we need to know the word of God. I'm saying that's why we need to know the word of the word of God. That's why we need to know. I mean, so that if I speak, the Bible says, let the weak say I am strong. It doesn't say let the weak say you know I'm very weak. I'm not able to go out. Uh -uh. <laughs> let the poor say I am I'm rich. That's the way God thinks. Now when you begin talking that, huh? like we also begin saying, we are taking over this city in the name of Jesus. We are going to every town. We are bringing people, people to Christ. Thousands are listening. Now that's what I was speaking before I went to radio. Thousands are going to listen to me. Now we have begun going on TikTok, going on uh, uh, Reel, on Facebook. And I'm realizing, you just put a, a video there, you just realize 100 views. Uh, I just tried yesterday. Just put the one there. 160 views. Allah. <laughs> just 15 minutes. Oh, sorry, just one minute. And, and somebody's, I'm learning a lot. Yes, we are catching them. <laughs> so you, you, you catch them by every means, by all means. All of all of one. So if even you when you go to Facebook, now you begin seeing TikTok. I put one the first time and I realized over five hundred and seventy views. Ah five hundred and seventy views. Then I realized so you just throw, throw just a one minute clip and you see five hundred people watch. So meaning I can put in that in that TikTok what I want people to hear. And then I release. Now, it's, 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 it's a kind of reasoning. And people are hearing. Kwa Facebook, what are media? Kwa TikTok, what are media? Unatupa tu? That's all we think. We need to think that. Now, if I believe that, people will listen to me. Kuna mwenye anakaa pale preacher anashanga, nani atanisikia? Kama tu, kasna ma mwenye mwana biyashara, mwenye mengea kwa kwa soko na anashanga kama bidha zake zitanunuliwa hey sioni wa customer leo siju the way you're talking matters the way you're talking now we have begun kiborana service that we are doing we were doing here practice and i see people come <laughs> in the evening sit while you are talking so we just doing in it was present worship i was just leading present worship here i see people coming in so that tells you that when that program take off, people will fill this place. And I don't have doubt about it. I believe it is possible. So, what I'm trying to say is, the words you speak matters. The words you speak. When you come here to pray, don't just come. Organize what you're going to speak. And then also be specific. Be specific. God is going to listen to your word. And he's going to confirm whatever you are saying to happen. And it will happen. You're not going to be a beggarly type of believer. You know, this one who is always weak and wondering, God, why things are not working. No, 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 no. You stand up, you decree a thing. The Bible says in chapter number 22 of the book, let me read this. This is very powerful. Job chapter 22, verse 28. That word, around some 10 verses there, she need to be exposed. Job. Let me read for you very fast. I want to show you something. Verse 21. Job 22, 21. 
Acquaint now yourself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto you. Hmm? It says get to know God deeply. That's what he says. Acquaint yourself simply means get to know God deeply. Hmm? Go, understand God deeply. And then he says, and then you will have peace. Thereby good shall come unto you. Ah. <laughs> Receive, I pray, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from your tabernacle. It's powerful. Eh? Return to him. When you return to God, he says you'll be built up. Utajengwa kama nyumba. Maisha yako, ada kama ilikuwa zero. Some of us come to God when you are nothing. Nothing. And God can build you like a building and raise you like a gorofa. <laughs> and you are seeing everybody sees you. I've seen it happen when people just sit here in their life, turn around. And the people that people thought are useless turned into somebody. Yeah, God has ability to do that. Verse 24 says, Then, sh the, then shall thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the storms of the brooks. What does this mean? And then he says, money will come to you. This is what he's saying. Tungine tunafikiria tukitafuta mungu pesa ina tutoroku. Ni wale wamekosa mungu ndi wanaomba. That's how people think. It's a lie. Wealth will come to you, he says. And it's true. Verse 25. Yeah, the almighty shall be your defense and thou shall have plenty of silver. Hey. This is dangerous. God will be the one protecting you. God will be the one protecting you. Defending you. And the Bible says, money come, come to you in plenty. Uh, for then shall thou have the, thy delight in the Almighty and shall lift up your face unto him. Kiwa na pesa nyingi. Na unajua mungu. Atana na mwenye pesa imejia kwa bank na anatakuwa mungu ye mwenyewe. I'm not talking about that. One thing I also want to speak today to us. I have seen somebody big begin from scratch and rise up to a million. One of them in this church is Abraham Siko. He began, uh, was beginning, what is it called? Gikomba, not Gikomba, what is it called? Mitumba. <laughs> was he beginning Mitumba? He couldn't sell anything. He began coming sitting like this. Now you can tell me what he's doing. So far he has bought three different lands. And he's, he's just 2017 May he began. When I was teaching in that church, I was talking, reading to them something like this. Today, something is happening. But the question is, why, why do you disappear from God's presence when money comes to you? Here they say, after this thing comes to you, and God has blessed you with a lot of money, what is he saying? Then you shall take, have delight, that is in verse 26, in the Lord, in the Almighty, and shall lift up thy face unto him. In other words, the more God is blessing, showering you with lots of wealth, you desire always to sit in his presence. You come and sit. Acquaint yourself with him. Be informed in the things of God. That's what they are, they are telling us. The more the word of God fills you, the more money will come to you, and the more you want to stay, sit in his presence. I have not seen those, those rich people in Kenya, in, in Marsabit. I want to see them now in Jesus' name. I only see them that when they get money, they don't know God. And they want to become God. They look at you like, they can't be God. God will bless you, but he still wants you to sit. The more you sit in his presence, the more you... Listen. In ministry, I don't have doubt about this. I will be one person who will be commanding the biggest congregation in Marsabit. Now just listen. <laughs> This, this anointing does not just, it's not just, you'll see. I want anybody who is doing anything, if you're doing business, you can be the best in this town by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's possible. If you're doing some organization somewhere, you can raise it and be the best. It's possible. God wants to show himself big through you in the land. 
That's what you want to do. So that after you get this big name, you'll see us in just less than a year or two. We're going to be very far. Very far. And I'm not there to be far to show myself now. Uh, doesn't mean your boss. God wants to show himself. I want to reveal Jesus to this city. When you get money, you know money will always reveal who you really are. That's why I always say, before you get money, be discipled and develop the character of God. Otherwise, people are going to see another character that comes from within you and they get shocked. Everybody with the money, look at them. They feel they are so powerful, they cannot be managed. Those are poor people. They think they are better than everybody. Nobody is better than anybody. Somebody rightly said in Kiborana. Let me work Angel Walirinjir. It's very true. <laughs> if all of us are tapping into the very grace of God, you're not better than the other person. In fact, the Bible says, treat your neighbor better than yourself. That's what the Bible says. Hmm? Think the other person to be of more value than you. In other words, do whatever is in your ability hmm, to raise this person's standard. Just assume that. Huh? So when God puts something in your hand, it is for you to help somebody else. Verse 27 says, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Wow. You pray. After getting money, you pray. We need to know about the kazi. Kazi kipatikana. Shoo! Hey, we need to <laughs> here they are saying that is wow now you realize why you must learn the word of God before you become big what I wanted is in verse 28 he says thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established you will make a statement you will say something and that something will come to, to pass. So when you come to prayer, you have to have words. Hmm? Words that will work for you what you want to do. Like for example, one of the words I speak here every day from the time I began this church. Chapter number 20 of the book of, let me show you. I'm just going to come back here briefly. These are the words I've been speaking, and you want to t I, I, I want you to tell me if it is working or not. By then, some of these radio things didn't begin. Chapter 20. Uh, no, chapter number 19 of the book of Acts. Verse 20. The Bible says, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Where was this? In Ephesus. Paul came and did a class. He, be, he came and began ministry in, in Ephesus, now the Ephesian that you read, in chapter number 19. And the Bible says he got some small disciples, very few disciples. And then the Bible says he taught them for two years every day. I'm talking about Paul. When you read this Bible, people are meeting every day. And then you see the big result. Uh, if you want to know that, it is in verse, uh, verse 9, chapter number 19, verse 9. But when divers, when many were hardened, could not believe, uh, the Bible says, but spake evil of the way that before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one tyrannous. Look at verse 10. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia had the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, both Jews and Greece. Now look at where, where does miracle come from? Verse 11. And God wrote special miracles by the hands of Paul. But what I want is verse 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. He was teaching every day until he saturated the area with the word of God. I stand here and I say, the word of God will atten get attention of everybody. In the village, in town, everywhere. They're going to listen to me. Huh? <laughs> and this word 
will prevail and will reach everywhere. Huh? This is a prayer that I make that in Marsabit, I'm putting it in writings. I do books. I'm going to radio. <laughs> this word has to grow mightily and prevail. That's not what I speak every day. The word. So if Paul had class and he has been teaching every day for just in two years, in two years, there was no Facebook. I don't know what was happening. <laughs> there was no TikTok. There's no microphone. There was no, all that you have here. But the man, the Bible says, taught. And the reason as to why the whole area he caught fire when he was teaching. Because every time as he's teaching, there is miracle happening. You know when a miracle happens, watanda kuleta watu. Watanda kuleta. Wataleta kuleta. Kama chenye tunafundisha ni neno la mungu, lazima kuwe na miujiza. Lazima kuwe pia na uponyaji. People should not fall, remain sick. That's why I feel, I feel insulted as a pastor if I am praying in this house every day and a member here is very sick. I think I have a problem. It is unbiblical. It is the word they hear that heals them. As they are hearing, demons disappear out of their body in the name of sickness and disease, in the name of pain. So the Bible says, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. You know what they did? Verse 19. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burnt them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Mbakata wanya wana abudu witches. They brought everything they burnt. That is what happens when the word of God prevails. So one of the things I decree is the word of God will grow and prevail in the count of Marsabit. Mightily, every morning. The Bible says you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. What do you, you need to decree something. You need to speak something. Whenever you come every morning, what are you speaking? The month is now just beginning. By the time the month is over, all that you are speaking must come to pass. Something about it. You must speak. Prayer is a place where you come and create what you want. You look at what you want and you begin speaking. Speaking. <laughs> I'm still prophesying this, this morning devotion. Last year we are not getting people like the number I have now. These ones are so many for last year. And they're going to fill this place. I don't have any doubt. But I prophesy. Morning devotion will just be like any other service. No, no, when you to Nakuja Sunday, Sunday service, I'm speaking. This, this morning devotion will be like that. That people will just wake up. Nikama to Sasa Sunday, Kila Subui, when I could have Kujab, Nakuyomba. It's a thought in my head that I am creating and is working. What is it? Look at your business, talk it to it, expand it. Speak and create what you want and pick it. The problem is, you know, sisi tumejifunza ku sisi tumejifunza tu kulilia mungu kama watoto. No. And look at the last bit of that verse. Very powerful. The Bible says, and the light shall shine upon your ways when you speak the word of God into your future. The Bible says the light shall shine. Some of us are speaking words that darkens our future. <laughs> you know I am like, no, no, no. You are creating problems. But you decree something, a thing, until you lighten up your future. The words you should be speaking into your future should be the words that you want, it create for you the future you want. I've been saying I'm an international preacher. I'm not just a local one. Hey, I don't, do I look like a local one now? I'm not really. They're going to hear me from all over, every continent. I'll fly to Europe. I'll fly to Canada. I'll fly to 
I've been speaking. I've been speaking and now it is come to pass. When you see me began flying, you then know that I have created. I don't need money to fly. I need the word of God to fly. I speak it and God will cause it to happen. Now, the one I, I love most also is verse 29. The Bible says, when men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. Wakati kila mtu wananguka, na wanasema maisha mekua mbaya, the Bible says, what are you going to say? There shall be lifting up for me. Mimi nainuka. Ato ngini waki, anguka mimi nafanya ni? This is what prayer does. When everybody is crying and things are not no, you say things are working for me. I'm succeeding, I'm progressing, I'm increasing. Everything is working for me. You carry words and you come into the presence of God. The words that will build your future. You can create anything. God didn't have money when he was making heaven and earth. Money is not even God's idea. Money didn't come from God. It's not God's idea. In heaven, there is no money. You think people are doing some business in heaven also, like just like here? Money is the word of God. The word of God is what uh, Bishop Oedepo was asked by Krefler Dola. Krefler Dola came to, uh, to, to Nigeria one time. And he looked at this guy, massive building, thousands of people. Krefler Dola got shocked. He's coming from America. But he comes to Nigeria to pastor Bishop Eode Post Church. Then the church was 2000 Sita. It was still the biggest church in, in the world. He built in 1999. So when this man came in, when this man came in, he's like the number of workers in his church and more than the one in, he has in the U.S., he didn't, he didn't even see any church that has workers like this. And then he asked him, my friend, how did you do this? <laughs> and the man says, faith. <laughs> hey. But I also have the same faith. He says, faith is the currency of heaven that has the same value everywhere. In other words, it doesn't matter whether you're in the U.S., or in Marsabit. You have faith, you can have everything you want, even then what the people in the U.S. cannot access. The man went back, hey, inspired. Miles Mundo also called, took some people. He says, let's go and see what is happening in Nigeria. In Bishop de Oedipo's place. He says, just let's come and see. Because what, he, what they have done in Nigeria is not anywhere on earth. On the earth. He took people and he, they went there to. Now as you are talking, that was in 1999 when he did that. Early 2002, 2003, that's when they went there. But in 2016, he has put up now a church of 100,000 sita. Now all his sons are putting up 100,000 sita. Spiritual father has 100,000 sita. And nature has put out 100,000 sita. Everybody now Kanisa nye watu elfu miya moja wanaka kwa mkutano moja. They were having over 600,000 attendance of the church physically. And your church are 50,000. They have to build these things. And that man when he speaks, you need to read some of his books, you'll be shocked what he, how he thinks. And then how he speaks. There's a time he said, we are going to buy pickups like loaves of bread. Pick up. Now they are buying. Usually, we need to prepare a parking place for planes. When you want to go to church. He believes it is possible and God is the one that said and is speaking, is happening. So when you come here, don't waste time. Be specific on what you want. Speak it until you see it. 
Amen. We can pray for the next 15 minutes as we end our service. Marco se pola bade. Mashabada lava kwedi. Hallelujah. You need to speak what you want to happen. What you want to see. Malego sakatalaba.